It's Tuesday, the 19th of September, and this is PhotoWalkthrough.com, Tutorial 9, Chapter 4. Hi, I'm John Arnold. Today we'll be looking at the text layers in Michelle's gun image and learning all about layer effects and blending options. I'll give you a quick update about our competition and I'll mention where you can find out more about last week's workshop. Oh yes, it's good to be back. I spent last week over in Germany with Chris Marquardt and the folks that attended the Tips from the Top Floor Photography Workshop and I had a great time. The whole week was spent visiting beautiful locations, shooting photography assignments, critiquing each other's work and learning and improving our photography. And if you'd like to see some of the pictures we took while we were there, then visit Flickr and look for the group called TFTTF Workshop 01. There's a link there on your screen and I'll include it in the show notes as well. While we were there, Chris and I recorded a special Tips from the Top Floor show where the two of us discussed a number of photography-related topics. And there's also a sound seeing tour recorded while the group visited a local monastery. The show was recorded in front of the workshop attendees, and that was my first live studio audience, and that was pretty scary. So I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone that came along and treated me so well. So here's a big shout out to Chris, Rebecca, Paolo, Alan, Peter, Chris, Vance, Rudiger, Adrian the Ninja and Bacon Boy Matt. Remember, everything's better with bacon. And here's a quick reminder that we're running a competition at the moment and you can enter for a chance to win a ColorVision Spider 2 Pro, a great monitor calibration tool and I use one myself. To enter the competition, all you have to do is take a photograph inspired by the competition topic, Colour. Once you've taken a picture, you enter it by uploading it to Flickr and adding the tag PWChallenge1. Submissions are limited to one entry per viewer, and the first few entries are already in, but the competition deadline is October the 6th, 2006, so you've got just over two weeks left to enter. Good luck to everyone taking part. Okay, let's get started. I've got a ton of stuff to show you today. And so let's begin. Let's have a look at what Michelle did. We're looking at the text layers today. And in Michelle's text layers, we can see that there are four layers here. If I just turn them off, you can see what they are. We've got Misery Pain Torture here, just to the right of the cannon. And from Battletops Untold, Demonic Halo of the Righteous, and Suffering Supplication bright and breezy themes, I'm sure you'll agree. Right, um, now each of these four layers is done in a slightly different way, which is great because it lets me show you a few different techniques. Um, let's begin by doing Misery Pain Torture. So I'll just turn this off and hide Michelle's edits. And to start with, we're going to need a text layer. I'm just going to click on here. Now, to begin with, we're using the Scriptina font, which I already have installed. I will stick a link to where you can download Scriptina in the show notes, and it's also on the screen right now. But Scriptina is the font we want to use. And I'm going to start off by choosing a sort of a, a sandy colour, somewhere about there-ish, I think. And Misery, Pain torture. And that's all a little bit small, so I'm just going to drag the point size up a little bit. There is pretty good. And then I'm going to grab the move tool and just move it to about there. Just so that it's sort of peeking out from behind the, the cannon. And you can see at the moment it is actually going in front of the cannon, and that's something we're going to address. So, the way we're going to do that is uh, on this layer here where it says we've got the text layer of misery, pain, torture. If I click just to the right of the text and double click, we get this layer styles window up here. And there's a whole bunch of stuff in here that I'm going to show you today. But I'm going to start with these blend if sliders down here at the bottom. Now probably the easiest way for me to explain how these blend if sliders work is to show you a different image. So if I cancel that for now, I've got a test image that are set up ready for today's show. 
And if, if you look at this, there's a few layers. There's a couple of things I'm going to be using later on here. But the background layer is basically black, grid, uh, graded black from black on the left to white on the right. And then over the top of that, I've got another uh, graded region going from the black at the bottom to white at the top. That's all it is. It's just two gradients, one over the top of the other. And if I double click again to the right of the text, just in the, in the empty grey portion of this layer, I get the layer style window. Um, let me see if I can move these around so that you can see more clearly what's going on. So I'm just trying to move that up there so that I can put the window down here. Now there's two bars here and what we're doing is we are telling Photoshop what colors it's allowed to blend. So what colors are, are going to be visible or not visible on the layer that we're editing here. So this layer style is for that overlaying gradient layer, layer 17. Now this layer, if I grab the black slider and drag it up, watch the uh, the overlaid gradient. As I drag this bottom slider up, you can see the gradient is vanishing from bottom to top. If I drag the top layer, top slider and drag it down, you can see the gradient is vanishing from top to bottom. And the reason for that is that this is basically saying we will allow colors on this layer to be visible if, if we drag the bottom slider, if they are darker, lighter than this black point. Or if we drag the top slider, it's if they're darker than this white point. So essentially dragging a, a sort of a threshold value in. So any any tones that are darker than this black point won't be shown. Any, any tones that are lighter than this white point won't be shown. And we can drag those in and out. And what we can also do, if you see this little, this little slider here, uh, has got sort of a split in it and if I hold down the option or alt key and click on one side of it I can drag those points apart and what that does now is it says okay we've got a black point that's somewhere in between here and then between these two points it's sort of graded so anything that's sort of halfway between is 50% opacity anything that, that's below the lower point is completely um, obscured and anything above the higher point is completely visible. So once we've broken that uh, slider apart, we can move those two things independently. And if you look at the, the layer behind, this might be easier to see with the white. Let me let me split the white slider again, open. So clicking on the left half of that pointer, holding down the, op, the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac, dragging it to the left. And if you look at what's happening up here, you can see that we're getting a sort of a graded band now between where it's completely transparent at the top and completely opaque at the bottom of that band. So we can say these tones between here and here are going to be becoming less and less visible. And if I drag that top half down, the bottom half down, I can still say there are still some white values right at the top that are completely um, removed from this layer. Right, so that's the this layer slider. The underlying layer slider, you might already have figured out, works in a very similar way. If I, t if I was to drag the black point slider on the underlying, you can see that our gradient disappears from left to right. And if I drag our white point slider on the underlying layer, it vanishes from right to left. And that it's because we're saying we're going to allow this this layer to blend at any points on this layer where the underlying layer is at least as light as this black point or at least as dark as this white point. And just like on the layer above, we can split it. So if I hold down the Option or Alt key, click on the pointer, I can drag that up. I can drag these two points independently now and say I want these turns to be visible in to, to a, a, a percentage opacity based on how far between these two points they are on the black point slider. So anything that's right at the bottom of this black point slider, anything, anything darker than that will be hidden. Anything lighter than the top of the black point slider will be completely uh, visible and in between it's graded. And just the same with the, with the white point slider. We can drag that around and we can make a nicely graded edge 
and that's all based on the background color of the image below. That's the whole point of this underlying layer slider. So we've got control over what is going to be blended based on the, and we're using gray values here, so based on the brightness of either this layer, black point and white point, or the underlying layer, black point and white point. You can't see that, I've just dragged out over the top, but there's the white point. So we're going to use that. It's very, I mean, this is this is a very artificial example, but we're going to use that when it comes to our text in order to say we're going to blend the text in based on the either, usually on the underlying layer, because our text tends to be a single color. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the underlying layer slider to determine where the text is blended in based on the brightness of the underlying layer. And that will give us a nice, a nice sort of uh, model texture to the text that, so that it looks in some cases like it's behind things and so that it looks in some cases like it's sort of part of the surface of a, a parchment or something like that. So if I cancel that, we'll come back to this layer again in a minute when I look at layer effects. But let's go back to our gun image and here we are with our misery pain torture layer again and we're going to double click on the text uh, on the area to the right of that text. Let's see if I can fly this up so that we can see it a bit better. There's Misery Pain Torture. We've got this little space to work in because I'm working on this 800 by 600 resolution. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just... First thing I want to do is the text is going over the top of the cannon and I'd like it to look like it's going behind the cannon. The cannon is, at this point, mostly brighter than its background. So I can achieve that by dragging this... Nope, not this layer. The underlying layer. I can drag the underlying layer white point down. And if you look at the bottom of the text there, you'll see it's starting to vanish just behind the cannon. So around about there, it looks like it's kind of going behind the cannon. There's a couple of little bits visible, but that's not a problem. Now, it's got all sort of pixely, so in order to make that more of a graded change, we can split the, split the two points apart so that we've got a graded opacity now. And you can see that's now sort of, it's sort of fading out at the top there where the background's lighter, and it's sort of fading out here where the cannon is lighter. And I'll just do the same at the black end as well, just to give us a nice sort of texture to it. And I'm going to now change that to soft light, and that will completely drop it now down back into the background and make it nicely sort of part of the, part of the image. I think that works pretty well. So let's just mess a little bit, a little bit more with those underlying sliders. Yeah, that's that's good. That's good. Okay, so let's move on to the and from battle tops untold. Now this one's an interesting layer because let me grab my text tool. And I'm going to type and from battle tops untold. I'll just give it a moment while my PC catches up. There we go. Now this one is interesting because it's on a curve. Now you see this button up here on our on our toolbar? We've got text and it's got a little curve below it. And when I click that it pops up the warp text dialog. And what we want is we want to warp our text onto an arc. So if I click the arc from the style there, we've got the ability to change how much that bend changes. We, we want to just a, a general bend like that. And then I also want to make this text probably quite a bit smaller. Oops. And I've messed that up completely. Let's. Let's go back to our... I got completely lost with where the image was there, so the way I got back from that was I double-clicked the hand symbol, which brings the, t the image back to the middle and um, makes it a size that fits the screen. So, going back to our text layer, let's, let's start that again. Let's trash that layer completely. Do a new text layer. And 
Oh no, let's start by getting our text a little bit smaller, which is what I was trying to achieve. And from battle tops untold. And once again, clicking the warp text button. And once again, choosing arc. And we don't want it quite that bendy. Now this time, I'm going to do edit free transform. And that's going to give me this nice bounding box. And it's going to let me spin it round because I want this to go up in the top right corner. So I can click inside that and drag it around a little bit. And I think it's probably still a little bit too large. So I can drag the points in at the corners. If I hold down the shift key, it'll keep the ratio the same, the height to width ratio the same. I'm just going to line that up nicely in the corner so that it sort of arcs across the corner and just sort of peeks out at the top. I, I don't want it all to be appearing in inside the image. So I'm just nudging that now with my arrow keys on the keyboard. And once I'm happy with that, I press enter on the keyboard and that fixes it. Now that's still editable text. If I click on it with my mouth with my point with my uh, text tool selected, I can still type in there. So just delete what I typed in. Now what are we going to do with this text? Now, we've done text on an arc and we've chosen a sort of a sandy colour which is probably the colour we do want. Um, next thing to show you is to show you some layer effects. Now um, before I show you those here, I'm going to go back to my other window so that you can see more clearly. I've got this some text layer at the top here and what we're going to do is we're going to do our first two layer effects. So on our some text layer, once again I'm going to double click on the empty area just to the right of the, the layer name. Now underneath um, the blending options default we've got a whole bunch of layer effects here. So let's drag this so that you can see those things. Let's just start with a really obvious one. There's a drop shadow layer effect. And as I tick that, as I select that, turn it on and off, you can see under the text we're getting a little drop shadow. If I was to drag the distance a bit more and the angle, I can change where that drop shadow goes. I can change how, how fuzzy the edges of it are, how large the drop shadow is and how far from the text it is. So that's that's one of the very standard uh, layer effects. It's not one of the ones I want to use in this case. In this case I want to start by using the satin layer effect. And let me just show you what effect that's giving. Just zoom in a little bit. And then go back to our satin layer effect. You can see what it's doing is it's, it's sort of giving a uh, it's as though it's being lit from the sides, lit from all the sides at once. So it's giving it a sort of a 3D effect. And I just want to just drag that down a little bit because I don't want it too strong. And then the other effect that we're going to use is pattern overlay. And this allows us to fill whatever shape we've got with a pattern. And in this case I'm going to use a sort of a dotty pattern like that. And I want it really sort of grainy. So it'll be looking something like that. There's some bog standard patterns in here that you can choose from. You can also um, create your own patterns. I think I showed you that in the last the last tutorial with the text brush, sorry with the brushes, so I won't show you that again, but we can fill our the shapes on this layer with a pattern and we can let me turn that satin on and off and you can see it's still giving it a little bit of form around the edges. So we're going to do those same things on our other uh, image, the gun image. So from battle tops untold, this layer we're going to let me just shorten that name so that I can double click on the area to the right of it. And this time we're going to go to satin. And I don't want too much of this. Let's just let's just zoom in a little bit so you can see how this looks. And bringing back our layer effects, going back to the satin, I'm going to just drag the opacity down, 
because if I drag it up too much the text just completely vanishes and if I drag it completely down it's a little bit too bright so I'm just going to drag that up just a little bit sort of 10 to 15 percent something like that and then with our pattern overlay see by, the, by default this pattern overlay is giving us this blue pattern which I don't want so I'm going to choose that sort of dotty pattern there and I'm going to drag the scale right down so that it looks more like a more like a gritty texture and then I'm going to set the blending mode on this to multiply because that pattern is actually got a is actually got a color um, if I choose multiply it's going to it's going to just apply the texture of that so I'm going to do that and I'm going to drag the opacity down a little bit just to bring back the the lightness of that text and I think that's probably pretty good so how does that look now? That looks not bad. Um, now one of the other things that uh, Michelle did on this layer was she did a blend on the red channel. In the same way that you can do a blend if based on the brightness values of either this layer or the layer behind, you can also do a blend based on the red values. So it's exactly the same thing but it's only looking at one channel. And in this case we dragged quite a way down and put a A split in there. Uh, perhaps nope, that's the wrong layer. I did it on this layer, and I should have done it on the underlying layer. It's the second time today. So it's something like that, and that's just helping to hide the text at the top here, just where it goes into that lighter portion. So it's sort of making it look like it's sort of almost scratched into the surface of this image. That's not looking bad. I'm just going to go back to the satin because I'm just seeing that the word untold is vanishing a little bit there. I'm just going to drag the opacity down a little bit on that satin layer just to bring back some of the visibility on that last word there. And also I'm just going to grab my move tool and just move it a little bit to the right. I just want that sort of, just to sort of bring in that corner of the image there. I do need to use my keyboard just to nudge that into position. I've got snap to it turned on, which is making it snap when I drag it with my mouse. Now, so that's our and Battletops Untold layer. Let's do Demonic Halo of the Righteous. So once again, I'm going to grab my text tool. I'm just going to click over here and I'm going to type Demonic Halo new line of the righteous and when you're in the text tool by the way if you put your pointer away from the text you get the little um, move cursor so I can now drag that and move it and I think I probably want that text just a tiny bit larger I'll drag that to there which I think is about the right place now this time, I've still got the text selected, I'm going to change the colour to a mid-grey. I just want mid-grey which was brightness 50, or lightness 50. You can type those things in just as well here. Right, so we've got a mid-grey text, um, and this time I'm going to just click off so that I fix that text and don't um, accidentally type over it. Give my PC a moment to catch up. My PC is thrashing a little bit because recording these videos takes a huge amount of memory as well. So give it a second. There we go. Um, right, so with my Demonic Halo of the Writer selected, I'm going to choose an interesting blend mode for this, Color Dodge, which makes it almost look like it's projected like a, if you imagine a projector projecting onto a wall with a texture on it, you find that the darker areas of the wall don't reflect so well and we've got a sort of the lighter areas are a, are a little bit more reflective so we've got this interesting almost projector type image here um, now I'm going to do an, a blend if on this one so once again I'm just going to shorten that name so let's look at the blend if on this I, w I want to just remove that slightly over bright bit there so let's just do another red because this is basically a brown image which is a lot of a lot of reds and yellows in it so I'm going to do the underlying layer I'm going to get it right this time 
And if I drag that down, just the whole point, you can see the text vanishing where I drag it down. So I want something like that, so that it looks like it's almost going behind whatever this blurred background thing is. And then I'm going to just use the Alt key and split this pointer up down here at the bottom. Split it up just to make that more of a gradual change so that it doesn't look so pixely. And that's looking pretty good. So that's probably a little bit... Letting a little too much show again. There we go. That's more like it. Right. And something else we're going to do on this layer going to add a layer mask. You've seen layer mask many times before. So on this, with this layer selected I hit the add layer mask button which is this one, the little square with the circle on it at the bottom. And I'm going to grab my brush and our layer mask as always comes in completely white which means it will completely reveal whatever we've got. But this time I'm going to paint black, so just pressing X to get black as my foreground colour. I'm going to drag my opacity down a little bit. So let's go down to 50%. I'm doing this all with a mouse today, by the way, just for just for kicks. Um, and then as a brush, I'm going to choose. I think we've got these three, these four sort of uh, cauliflower type brushes. I think the third one down is the one with the largest texture. So I'm just going to paint a little bit of texture on the layer mask over that over the centre of that text there. And if I just turn that layer mask on and off. You can see it's just giving, I'm just holding shift down while I click on the layer mask and that's hiding and revealing the layer mask and you can see it's just giving a little bit more texture to that text. We don't want this text very readable, we just want it sort of faintly a suggestion of uh, like somebody's handwritten notes in a notebook and little thoughts and, and uh, moments of inspiration about war and you know, the sort of misery that comes from that. So let's move on to our final layer suffering supplication. Once again we need text and this time we're going to type suffering supplication and once again I want to rotate this so I'm going to go to edit free transform and I'm going to rotate that so that it's vertical. Now to get it straight vertical I could mess around with the mouse or I could just come up to the rotation up here and type in 90 or in this case I actually want minus 90 there we go and as with always on the transform tool if you click inside the box you can drag that around and I want it about there so I'm happy with that the size looks about right so I'm going to press return on that and this is still editable text if I click on it with my with my text tool I can click on it and you can see I can move my cursor around in it. I could type hello at the end. Still editable text. Now the next layer effect I'm going to show you is in a shadow and once again I'm going to pop back to the um, let me click off that layer and let it finish producing it. Go back to my text uh, example here. I'm going to turn off that satin and I'm going to show you an inner shadow which is awful lot like the drop shadow. Remember the drop shadow allows us to do a, a drop shadow behind whatever's on this layer. The inner shadow allows us to do a shadow inside whatever is on this layer. So in this case um, if I go to my inner shadow I can do I can change the distance of that, I can change the size of that, and I can change how fuzzy it is. Just like the drop shadow the other thing that we're going to do on this next layer is we're going to do a gradient overlay which is just like the gradients you're used to seeing um, if you were to do a selection like a marquee or something and then draw your gradient inside you would get exactly the same kind of effect so we're, what we're doing is all of the pixels on this layer that have got something in them that are not a, that are not transparent basically are going to be affected by this gradient overlay and we can click on that gradient and choose colors in just the same way we normally would and we can choose whether or not we want radial gradients or angular gradients or just straight linear gradients change the size of those things so that's that those are the two um, effects that we're going to use 
So I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to go back to the gun layer. And with our suffering supplication, we're going to start off by once again double clicking on the text to the right of the name. And we're going to do the inner shadow. This is going to be a very subtle effect. But our inner shadow is going to be, first of all, I'm going to set it to multiply blend mode so that it's darkening. Remember, the blend, blending modes here are exactly the same blending modes you get with your layer blending modes, so they're grouped into, into regular uh, transparency layers, darkening layers, lightning layers, contrast layers, difference layers, and color layers. So um, all those blending modes that you're used to seeing work just the same. Everywhere you can do a blending mode, you get the same options. So we're going to do a multiply blending mode, which is going to darken. And then we're going to just drag the opacity way down, down to somewhere like that. Um, oh, I'm dragging the wrong ones. Let me fix that. Should be inner shadow multiply. We're going to in the inner shadow opacity. We're going to drag down, and the angle looks pretty good. Um, the rest of those numbers, I'm just going to leave those as defaults. So that's our inner shadow, and if I just turn that on and off, you can see it's just darkening the text down a little bit. And if I was to zoom right in, you'd be, you'd be able to see that it's actually doing a little drop shadow inside. So it's going to give a little bit of shape to this, um, in the same way that you would get if you were using uh, the nib of a of a, a, a fountain pen. You know, you do actually get some sort of shape to the to the ink as it hits the surface. So next thing, I'm going to do a gradient overlay. And I'm going to just make my own gradient. I'm going to start with black at the top. I'm going to choose that sandy colour that we had before, which was about there-ish at the, at the very top. Then in the middle, I've just double-clicked on the gradient there. I'm going to choose a sort of a rich brown, something like, something like that. So there's there's a reasonable-looking gradient. Now I want a radial gradient, and you can see at the moment we've got the dark bit in the middle and the light bit at the ends. I want that the other way around. So there's this reverse tick box here that lets me choose to switch it, switch it around. So we've got the lightness in the middle. And I think that's looking pretty good. Yep, I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm going to set this blending mode on this one to overlay, which will give it a, a sort of... Um, and a contrast increasing effect. I'm going to drag the opacity down because at the moment it's way strong. Just want to make it a subtle thing so you can see the the darkness of the words of the letter S and suffering there against the against the lighter background and the lightness in the middle there against the darker background. And then finally I'm going to on this layer I'm going to add another layer mask. So once again hitting the add layer mask button it gives us a white layer mask. I'm going to grab my brush. I've still got the same brush selected, so I'm just going to paint a little more texture over that as well. Probably went a little bit far with that. Let's grab the eraser and just erase away some of that texture that I just painted on. And I think that's a pretty good place to stop. I've showed you an awful lot today. Um, basically, just to recap the things that we've looked at, um, double-clicking on a blank part of a layer brings up this layer style options. You've got all sorts of layer effects down the left hand side here. I've covered just four of them today, or five of them if you include the drop shadow. Have a play with those. There's some really fun stuff in there. Great if you want to do a bit of uh, design as well as a bit of photography. Um, and then this very subtle and, and tricky to use blend if sliders. Uh, remember these are black points and white points for the colors and tones on this layer or the underlying layer and so any any tones that are between the black point and the white point will be included any tones that are outside of those won't be included and all you're doing is you're saying what tones are going to be included to be to go through the blending mode so you've got to sort of think of this in layers it's it's a threshold values Anything, any values between the dark and the light will go through the blending mode. Anything that's outside of it will be transparent. Um, so I hope that makes sense, and uh, I will catch you next week. Thank you very much for listening.